morning, my name is Celine and today I will take you to one of the most beautiful burgh of all Italy. We are in the municipality of Camerata Cornello, in the verdant Valle Brembana, in the province of Bergamo, not far from Milan. The name Cornello may derive from the word corna, which in the local Italian dialect means rock stone, since the village is situated in a rocky area overhanging Brembo River. As you can well see, there are no cars here. In fact, in order to preserve and maintain the original structure, no roads were built. There is just one road, which is a mule track, to reach the village. This mule track, named Via Mercatorum, was extremely important since allowed merchants and foreigners to reach several markets behind the mountains. In 1592, a new road, Strada Priola, was built by the Venetian government in order to connect directly Bergamo city to the Valtellina, avoiding Spanish lands. As a result, the village was cut off all the merchant traffic and eventually led to the closing of the studio, which now became barns and cellars. After a very little walk, we are finally at the Burg, which is welcoming us with this beautiful arch and is leading to the structure of the Burg. As a positive aspect, the isolation contributed, however, to the conservation of the original urbanistic structure, which appears nowadays in his original medieval form. The burg is structured in three levels. The first level hosted merchants and travelers, which stopped here to refresh and eat something after long travels. The second level, above the first one, belonged to citizens and inhabitants. And guess what? They are still here. Cornello counts 30 people. We are in the third level of the burg, which belongs to the church and clergy. There are several churches here. The main and the most important is this one, which belongs to Saint Cornelio and Cipriano. This church is massive and has a romantic structure, with a single nave and an asp. In the inside there are many fresco paintings which show the daily life of the burg and the iconic Virgin Mary. In the inside, we can have a clearly view of the life of back in the time. 
Those fresco paintings are very important since they are well conserved and worth reading, allowing us to understand and appreciate medieval life they report. In fact, we can clearly see how life was in the Litterburg, and as an example we can see a marshal in a workshop with all his tools. Back to the name of the burg, Cornello dei Tasso, we have to speak about this great family. We have to say that once was only named Cornello, then became Cornello dei Tasso, thanks to the family Tasso, which are the most important of the village itself. Except from the well-known poet Torquato Tasso, Tasso family was well known and estimated since they were founder of the postal system, allowing to connect several places correspondence. They quickly managed to become part of a private Venetian society, collaboration that raised their power economically and politically on a European level. They became very important and different, achieving to become official couriers of the Pope correspondence, delivering letters in Milan and Rome. They also worked for the Asburgic emperors from Maximilian I to Karl V, organizing their communication through a courier's networks. All the communications were guaranteed since they could change horse and couriers every 25 kilometers and cover long distances in few time horse riding and maintaining a quick and reliable service. It is told that a family member of Tasso traveled two days with his horse from Frankfurt to Bruxelles to personally deliver to Karl V the news of his election as an emperor. In this way, Tesso family ensured absolute loyalty towards clergy and emperors, which returned ensuring them back plenty of even more important assignments, such as tax profit transportation. This was possible using coaches which hosted passengers too. The service was so-called taxi and led to the modern word taxi. Tasso family gained more and more power and became even richer. They owned a castle, now ruined, and a palace, which were used for sighting due to his dominant position. In front of the palace, we can see their museum, which is marked with their family emblem. We are now in the museum dedicated to Tasso family. This is a contribution to communication and post itself. We can find a lot of examples 
of communication and postal service, such as horns, which were used by informers to announce their arrival in order to prepare another horse, food and refreshments for couriers. And the first mail stamp, which was made in England in 1840. The museum is composed of three different locations, each one with its own treasure. In the first one, we can have a look at the letters and their handling during pandemic, which witness the process of disinfection of the same. Each letter should have been correctly disinfected in order to gain the approval stamp and be ready for processing and forwarding to the final recipient. The second one shows a collection of letter and postal mail stamps along the post medieval ages. All of them are precious and very well conservating. We can also have a taste of the time handwriting and politeness of writing manners. The last one is entirely dedicated to Tasso family, celebrating famous poet Torquato Tasso and his praises and recognitions for his most important opera, Jerusalem Delivered. We can even appreciate some little old books edition at the time, on which we can see the passing of time and of many readers, despite they are still well conservated. At the upper floor, instead, we can find concrete examples of communications, starting from the Rosetta stale to the telephone invention, and again, feathers, inkwells, books, stamps, telegraph, and in the end, the first portable computer made by the Italian brand Olivetti in 1992. All these aspects contribute to build the magical, suspended and timeless atmosphere we can breathe entering this park, beginning from the inability to enter by car. We can really feel we are back in the medieval time, connecting with ancient villa structure, which is still present and quite intact, and taking with one of the 30 actual inhabitants, which are always scanned and willing to answer all tourist questions. This little amount of people is living peacefully in the burg, harvesting or breeding, as we can see from the surroundings. <music>